what is going on guys and holy if this isn't some type of foreshadowing or some type of omen to some degree then i guess i just don't know what those are these past couple of chapters have been punching me up left and right every part of the day serving me up in gary's way and like i told you guys in the last video i couldn't stop reading i benched all of this stuff in like two days i think the main issue with boruto and this is complete honesty is that it's a monthly series and a lot of people can talk about the filler and the differences between the anime and manga but or whatever the case i think boruto is good it just takes so long to get back into the hype with the anime and manga being different is all and there is a surface level argument you could kind of make about dragon ball being the same way but dragon ball is just on a totally different planet than boruto i'm sorry we call that the big dogs club okay in our last video, we saw how Kawaki was selflessly trying to sacrifice himself for the sake of Naruto, but Boruto wouldn't be having any of that, of course. Boruto interfered when Ko was trying to abduct Kawaki to go meet Ida in exchange for staying far away from Konoha, and that's how the fight began. He got pretty tossed around by Ko at first, of course, but after a short engage, Boruto was somehow able to draw out more of his karma, and it seemed like he was in full control of Momoshiki's power without being overtaken by him. Boruto's power increases dozens of folds over and this is instantly noticeable to Code, who had been heated by Ida not to take this power lightly or he may end up getting wiped out before he himself has the chance to get his limiters removed. Boruto continues putting pressure on Code, and the two are actually looking pretty even to a certain extent with all things considered, but all of a sudden, Boruto collapses, clutching his heart as an eerie but very familiar presence overcomes him. This has been an absolutely insanely content filled couple of weeks guys and if you have been enjoying everything we've been producing, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on to never miss a single upload as soon as they go live and consider leaving a like on this video as well, it really helps out a ton. Don't forget guys, we have a ton and I mean a ton of content planned for the near future. So be sure to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all anime related content that is to come. But without further ado. Kawaki runs towards Boruto, confused by whatever is happening to him at this point, across a battlefield full of Code's claw marks that let him pretty much teleport wherever he wants to. Code seems to be considerate enough, or maybe just curious enough, to give them a moment while Boruto gasps and struggles. But from his perspective, the world is completely frozen in place, and the only action going on is a figure sitting eerily on a tree branch, watching the show go down. And it's at this moment that of course we see that Momoshiki has appeared. Momoshiki scolds Boruto about how these drugs only act as a lousy stopgap to halt karmic extraction, and no matter how many of them he takes, he will still continue to exist within him. He emotionlessly extends a hello to the foolish lad, lying on the ground before him. Boruto is still frozen on the ground, however, as Momoshiki strolls towards him, eyeing everyone on the battlefield. Momoshiki casually, but irritated, looks at Code, calling him worthless Kata Dregs, and decides now is probably the perfect chance to just kill him. This is when Momoshiki makes the decision to take matters into his own hands. Kawaki's fears of Momoshiki reappearing materialize, and Boruto's body in the normal world starts attacking Code, leaping across the battlefield and landing a giant Rasengan right in his face. Code actually notices Momoshiki in advance and manages to dodge, calling out the destructive power at his disposal now, which is much stronger than Boruto's other karma powers. Code starts going off on his rant again about true Otsuki power and Boruto's choices, but is interrupted by Momoshiki attacking him again. Meanwhile, back in Konoha, Amato wonders how in the world Code managed to find Kawaki so fast, considering how he shouldn't have any sensing abilities. Sai talks about the unknown chakra they detected and how a fight is definitely going on now. Sumeri wonders if he has an outer ally, to which Amato comments on how there shouldn't be anyone so skilled. In contrast, Sai thinks it's a good thing that they finally located Code and should use this chance to get rid of him immediately. Amato has different plans though, as he hopes Kawaki doesn't mess this up after they've come so far. 
Back in the fight, the Momoshiki possessed Boruto keeps spamming giant Rasengan like it's Naruto in the fourth war or some shit, and has Code on the defensive now. Ida warns Code one more time to retreat already because it's clear he has no chance of winning here anymore now that Momoshiki is out. Code tries to make off with Kawaki again, grabbing him from behind, but Momoshiki is way ahead of him. Code tries to use Kawaki as a shield, considering how Momoshiki wants the chakra fruit too, which is pretty smart I guess, and tries to make a self-respecting getaway back to Ida, commenting on how honored he is to have met the great Momoshiki Otsutsuki. Just as he starts sinking back into those claw marks however, Momoshiki casually lets loose a Rasengan that pierces straight through his right shoulder. Kawaki is freed and Boruto's body kicks Code straight out of his own claw mark, taunting Code's sorry imitation of a karma. This dude Kawaki is just getting tossed around back and forth from person to person though, cause now it's Momoshiki's turn to drag him away. Momoshiki is a lot more straightforward than even Code though if you thought that that wasn't possible, as he threatens to just snap all of Kawaki's limbs and shut him up if he doesn't behave, to which he tries to reply to this statement with a retaliation attack, which of course just pisses Momoshiki off who prepares to just go ahead and snap all his limbs now. So finally, of course, at the very last second when it couldn't be stalled for any longer, Lord Hokage makes an entrance as Naruto and Shikamaru arrive on the scene, using the latter's shadow possession jutsu to stop Boruto's out of control body while Naruto saves Kawaki. Shikamaru complains about Boruto going haywire again, while Momoshiki just casually absorbs his shadow possession jutsu with his karma and breaks free. Ida tells Code it's about damn time to call it a day as the entire plan has pretty much blown up to massive proportions now, but he seems to be more happy about the newcomers, especially Naruto. Meanwhile, Naruto asks Kawaki about what's going on with Boruto, but Kawaki is livid out of his mind that all of these fools actually showed up here. Kawaki tells Naruto to just run away and get out of here, but of course, being no Kage, he'd never think of letting this guy take Kawaki away, stating how he won't back down from any enemy that threatens Konoha. Code uses this chance to grab Shikamaru by the neck, taking him hostage when his guard is down and threatens to kill him if anyone moves at all. Shikamaru does the obvious in this situation of course being the Hokage's right hand man and tells Naruto to take Code down without worrying about him, saying that he needs to do what's best for the village. This shit gets tense and only Momoshiki is upfront enough to break the silence, claiming that he'll help Code kill Naruto because he doesn't really care about what happens to anyone here, but Kawaki, he can't die. Kawaki's entire existence at this point seems to revolve around protecting the Hokage however, as he bursts loose and charges at Momoshiki only to get kicked aside again. Code threatens Naruto once more not to move, with Momoshiki telling him to just give up as he prepares a massive Rasengan. It seemingly hits Naruto first head on, but then Momoshiki starts realizing that it's actually getting absorbed somehow. Amato's calm words flow through Kawaki's mind about how his own powerlessness irritates him. He tells Kawaki to take control if he wants to fight, if he wants more power, if he really wants to protect the Hokage. It's rightfully yours, he says. He almost urges Kawaki to take Ishiki's power for himself in the form of a karma that's purely a weapon. Naruto, Momoshiki, and Code all watch in utter shock at Kawaki's new but seemingly impossible prowess. As Kawaki comes back into view, his karma has been fully reactivated, but it looks as if he's almost done a full on fusion with Ishiki. We then open with the motto's words in the air. Kawaki wanted to save Lord Seven, no matter what, and for this purpose, he needed more power to deal with someone as strong as Code. He offered Kawaki brand new power in the form of Ishiki's karma as a weapon only, since he already had the base requirement. His words die off telling Kawaki that the choice was all his and his alone. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Code all stare in shock at the karma wielding Kawaki, which he shouldn't have anymore mind you, and this may honestly be some type of crime in the Leaf Village, but Kawaki's about to commit way more egregious shit, trust me. 
while Ida explains how Amato never really gave the boy a choice in the first place. Amato had decided for him and even reconstructed the karma into him, using Kawaki's need for power to his advantage. This sick dude Amato supposedly restored the karma when he replaced Kawaki's right arm, and all he needed to activate it was a slight motivational push. Code doesn't really take too kindly about being used as a pawn in some sort of awakening for Kawaki, while Shikamaru realizes that he's communicating with someone else now. Kawaki looks at his own karma marks while Momoshiki goes on about how lost karma doesn't usually reappear again. How odd. Whatever it is that Amato is scheming, Kawaki always ends up being used by others. Angered again, Kawaki attacks Momoshiki who by the way is fully taken over Boruto at this point with multiple chakra rods and claw shards. Momoshiki isn't really intimidated by this and easily dodges them all but it was all just a ruse to lure him into position with a ton of disruption cubes hovering overhead. The cubes land on top of their target and Kawaki is seemingly victorious now. But Code watches his use of dojutsu and other prowess of Otsutsuki and wonders if Amato is trying to turn Kawaki into some second form of Ishiki. Naruto begins questioning Kawaki about these newfound Ishiki powers and how far he's willing to go, but he's immediately reminded to stay still for Shikamaru's sake because Code still has his claws to his neck. Kawaki is the Hokage's number one bodyguard at this point, so he's not going to ignore Lord Seven, replying saying that he'll do whatever needs to be done for him. We can't count Momoshiki out though as he snaps right back into the battle with a Rasengan, which easily gets absorbed by Kawaki. Kawaki then returns the favor with a fire style attack that Momoshiki easily just swipes away and lands a kick on him. Kawaki teleports behind him and then responds with a claw attack of his own, which he dodges yet again and lands another kick. Next, they start trading shuriken and other ninja tools, but Kawaki's projectiles are on a much bigger scale. What follows is a pretty nostalgic scene, I can't even lie. Very similar to Naruto and Sasuke's first duel in the Valley of the Inn, where Boruto and Kawaki charge at each other, one with a Rasengan, and the other with a huge mutated claw, which I guess is a... You know, I don't even know who's supposed to be representing who here, but we get the reference. And their attacks meet in a massive clash, creating a huge shockwave. Neither of them are out though, as they continue to throw punches at each other, and Momoshiki is slightly on the defensive now surprisingly with Kawaki showing amazing control over his own abilities. Kawaki presses the attack with a barrage of chakra rods against Momoshiki and deals the finishing blow with a giant disruption cube. But this is when we see Naruto jump into the panel at the last minute and rescue his son's body before he goes off the deep end. Code is still nearby, pretty much chilling, enjoying the chaos, but slightly agitated at Naruto's moving when he told him not to. But he decides there's really no point in killing Shikamaru now with everything just going haywire. It looks like he'd honestly rather just enjoy the show. Naruto is furious with Kawaki now, asking if he just plans to kill his son. Kawaki replies keeping it absolutely thorough with him, telling him that it's do or die now and that he's only doing what has to be done. Naruto berates him about how Boruto is still his child, but Kawaki counters with how he's also a demon trying to kill Konoha's Hokage. Naruto calls Kawaki out for being the demon now, which is pretty facts, pretty facts, I mean this nigga got horns, but he just punks Naruto about being unable to do what's necessary for everyone himself, but that's where he comes in. Naruto tells him to chill while Kawaki tells him that it's time to wake up and face reality. These guys clearly aren't getting anywhere and not nearly fast enough, so Boruto decides to step in and shoves his father out of the way, seemingly snapping out of it for the time being. More in control now, Boruto goes back and forth with Momoshiki in his head for his body's control, each of them telling the other to go back to sleep as Boruto is showing never before seen power until Momoshiki forced his way through. Boruto says that Amato's medicine is working to an extent, allowing him to kind of control Momoshiki's strength temporarily. But let's face it, those side effects are pretty devastating. Boruto snaps out of it and is horrified with how he almost killed his dad and Kawaki asks him, does he remember the promise he made to him? Kawaki had promised to get rid of Boruto's karma someday, and Boruto says that today might as well be the day that they go ahead through with their last resort plan. Boruto apologizes to Naruto, 
who tells him to give his best regards to the rest of their family as he claps his hands together. Naruto grabs him and tells him not to do anything rash or stupid for that matter, only to get blown away by a wind-style gale palm separating him far enough for he and Kawaki to do this quickly. Kawaki asks if he's ready one final time, with Boruto telling him that he is, and he's the only one that he can count on for this, while he continues to struggle keeping Momoshiki at bay also, and to go ahead and just finish it. Kawaki then goes on to charge at Boruto in a scene that struck me as insanely significant, piercing right through his chest with a massive claw, leaving a gaping hole in his torso as his lifeless body flies backwards. With the development of Boruto and Kawaki's character, and the tease of a near time skip, Boruto and Kawaki's clash here seems like some sort of wicked foreshadowing of events to come. Everyone is dumbstruck as they watch Boruto fall to the ground motionless. Naruto, instantly frozen, almost in time as Boruto falls in slow motion. Kawaki has committed what I can only assume to be considered a war crime in the Leaf Village by killing the Hokage's son. 